The Transatlantic Trade Investment Partnership, better known as TTIP, both promises freer trade between the EU and the US, but also has come with its controversy, with John Hillary, executive director of campaign group War on Want, describing it as an assault on European and US societies by transnational corporations. With me now is Christophe Bondi of Volterra Fieta, who was involved in the trade negotiations between Canada and the EU. Christophe, my first introduction to TTIP was with an article in The Independent whose headline wrote, What is TTIP and six reasons why the answer should scare you? So should we be scared? I think you might be scared of TTIP if you're afraid of better economic prospects for Europe or if you're afraid of more uh, job creation and growth, uh, greater economic opportunities. If you're afraid of those sorts of things, you might be afraid of TTIP. Frankly, I don't understand the source of the fear. I know that there are people who are inclined to want to close markets, but the uh, purpose of the TTIP is to improve economic prospects for Europe. But what's the for and against for TTIP? Because there are sort of strong arguments either side, no? On the for side, it's to uh, reduce tariffs, to reduce non-tariff barriers, increase regulatory cooperation, and to uh, encourage economic relations between two of the world's biggest uh, you know, economic units. On the against side, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about the nature of the agreement. Some of the main criticisms that I've seen are uh, a fear that um, Europe will lose its right to regulate, that there are concerns about the transparency of the agreement, um, and there's uh, specific criticisms about the investor state provisions of the agreement. And I think on all three of those things, Europe is responding. Um, with regard to the right to regulate, Europe isn't giving up the right to regulate in this agreement. What it's doing primarily is seeking regulatory cooperation with the United States, seeking better dialogue between regulators so we break down non-tariff barriers. But that doesn't mean that Europe can't uh, stop genetically modified food, for example, from entering or impose safety standards for um, you know, all sorts of products. All those rules remain in place. There is the concern that TTIP will spell unemployment for the EU, where jobs will go to the US, where trade standards and union rights are lower. Is this not justified? The agreement will include provisions for labor uh, standards and environmental standards as well, commitments on the part of both sides not to lower those standards in order to increase economic prospects for one side or the other. The agreement overall increases the ability of Europe to trade with the United States, which creates greater job opportunities, and it's intended to in increase jobs. And I dis disagree with the connection between higher labor standards and lower economic prospects. I think it's often the reverse. You see Germany has very high labor standards, very high degree of social compact, and it has a terrific manufacturing industry. But could TTIP see the EU become more Americanized almost? One of the things TTIP is trying to do is enhance regulatory cooperation between the United States and Europe. That means regulators on both sides of the Atlantic looking at how the other side does things, how they impose safety standards, and um, determining to what extent they can mutually recognize each other's standards. But that's meant to avoid non-trade barriers. It doesn't mean that Europe holus bolus adopts an, a US approach. Do you think then maybe the negativity could almost be like a prejudice against big business? I think it might be a tendency to think in protectionist terms rather than in terms of open markets. And I would challenge the notion that this is for big business because the agreement is meant to benefit small and medium enterprises as well. And in fact, there's a specific chapter in this agreement, there's specific provisions to allow small and medium-sized enterprises, which are the backbone of the European economy, to take advantage of this agreement. So it's not a big business agreement, it's a, an economic prospects for all agreement, I'd say. Finally, who would you say will be the winner out of all of this, the EU or the US? I think they'll, both sides uh, will stand to benefit from more open markets. Both sides will have greater uh, access to products and services from the other's market. Both sides will have greater economic opportunities. I can only hope that the negotiations continue towards a successful conclusion, for everyone's sake.